Thank you, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today at CarMax Enterprises. Uh, we're very happy today to have Minister Dreeshin joining us. Looking forward to what news he's going to share with us. So without further ado, uh, please join me in welcoming Minister Dreeshin. Well, thank you very much, Brian, uh, for that. And first off, before uh, I start, I just wanted to acknowledge the, the families from the Northwest Territories that have been uh, evacuated from their homes, uh, lots coming to the province of Alberta. And just as a, as a transportation economic corridor standpoint, we've actually sent up fuel trucks to, towards the territories, uh, have two fueling stations for evacuees that are driving into Alberta from the Northwest Territories, as well as, as tow trucks for people that if they ever have road issues or car issues, uh, that we can help them out as well. So just a, a heartfelt, uh, reach out to, uh, to the Northwest uh, Territories families that are going through this difficult time through the Alberta or through their wildfires um, that we're seeing right now. So, uh, with that, uh, thanks everybody for, for being here today, and, and thanks Brian for, and your CarMax uh, Enterprise Group for, for hosting us here today. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, it's an Alberta success story. This, this company that has done a tremendous amount of work in the province of Alberta for, for decades. And uh, Alberta is actually one of Canada's largest provincial highway networks with over 64,000 lane kilometers within the province of Alberta. And this vast provincial highway network connects communities and industries and is truly the, the backbone of our economy. And my number one priority as Minister of Transportation and Economic Corridors is to ensure that we have a safe and efficient and reliable transportation network. And the best way to do that is to invest in our highway maintenance and to make sure that we have a provincial network that serves not only our industries, but families across the province. Now, these investments demonstrate the government's commitment to ensuring a well-maintained network for the movement of people, energy, agriculture, and forestry products, and in investing in rehabilitation and maintenance that extends the lifespan of our highway network, which in turn reduces the need for full reconstruction of these roads. Now, rehabilitation of the existing highway network can extend the life of a highway by up to 20 years. And paving and overlay projects also increase the safety and efficiency of our provincial highway network that improves travel for Albertans and so many important sectors of our economy. And that's why this year's budget actually had an $80 million increase in the paving and overlay budget of budget 23-24 fiscal year. So in total, that's almost a third of a billion dollars or over with $335 million that have been allocated in the fiscal year of 23-24, uh, totaling 42 paving projects across the province. Now, those 42 paving projects uh, are spread across the province with eight uh, in the central region, nine in the north central and Fort McMurray region, 14 projects in the Peace Region and 11 projects in Southern Alberta. Now Transportation and Economic Corridors is also looking at new technologies to find ways to better improve the process of paving. This year's projects include testing the use of cold in place asphalt, which is a recycling technology that we're actually using right now on Highway 33 near Barhead. Now cold in place technology recycles existing pavement and mixes it in with new materials and replaces it as a new layer of pavement. Now, this technology reduces the need to haul away the, the old pavement, the old material, as well as having to haul in new material, and also reduces the emissions as you don't actually have to mix these two with heat. Now, the department is also exploring other technologies such as geocells as part of road construction. Now, geocells uh, can actually reduce the amount of base materials needed to build roads and we're also looking at bitumen to be incorporated in Alberta's road as an asphalt mix for our roads and so not only would Alberta's oil sands fuel our province but it would also help Albertans drive around our province and all, all of these new technologies have potential to reduce cost and extend the lifespan of our roads depending on the longer term performance and cost effectiveness and we're also looking around the world for inspiration uh, such as the Dutch builders who were able to demolish a roadway and installed a prefabricated tunnel and then rebuild a new highway to be one lane wider all within 48 hours where 
uh, versus years of construction if you compared it to here in Alberta. So all these types of new road building innovations are what we're looking at to bring road building here in the province. So we're not only investing more in our roads and building new roads and maintaining the roads that we already have, but we're con constantly looking for new ways to make sure that our provincial tax dollars go further. And our government is committed to ensuring the growth of our economy and ensuring Albertans have the best economy in the country. And by investing in our highway network, we're doing just that. So with that, happy to turn things over to Brian and uh, then take questions from the media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Minister Drieschen, for joining us today. Uh, what positive news you're sharing for Alberta's roadways. I know our teams at CarMax and our industry partners take a considerable pride in building and maintaining Alberta's roadways for Albertans, and collectively we celebrate today's announcement. So, uh, This continued investment by the province goes a long way in allowing our industry to maintain the roadway networks the minister spoke of and also provide further jobs for Albertans. So thank you. Okay. And uh, with that, we're going to turn it over to questions from the media. So we're going to do uh, one question, one follow up. So, uh, Operator, can you please put through the first caller? Catherine Rogowski, Operator Today. Hi, thanks, Minister, for taking my question. Um, off the top, you had mentioned the uh, evacuation of the Northwest Territories, and I know we've seen some challenges in, in getting out, and, and same with the wildfires here. There's some communities that have no evacuation route other than, say, boat. I'm wondering what planning you are doing um, to make sure there's safe evacuation routes out of communities or, or maybe even redundant routes in the event that roads get blocked off. Yeah, uh, great, great question. And uh, as a member of Alberta's Emergency Management Cabinet Committee, earlier this spring when Alberta was faced with a very severe wildfire season, actually the, the worst on record, uh, we, we addressed, we looked at these, these issues uh, because with the remote communities, especially in, in northern communities, they really just have, in a lot of cases, one, one point of safety, one point of, of access to get out. So looking at uh, building in more, more safety egress or more additional roads for them to be able to travel on is a priority and, and that's why uh, we actually started the work on Highway 686 which essentially would connect Fort McMurray all the way across to Peerless Lake and essentially off to Grand Prairie giving folks in, in Fort McMurray a secondary access point out of Fort Mac, not just Highway 63, as well as all the communities across northern Alberta to be able to have another uh, point of, of safety to be able to escape uh, in the event of, of wildfires. So it's, a, it's obviously a, an important issue and, and we want to make sure that we can work with communities in the north that are always going to have a, a, a fire season and how we can make sure that we can uh, do everything we can as a province to ensure that those communities remain safe. And how does that um, need for an evac either an evacuation route or a secondary evacuation route? How does that change the prioritization of infrastructure projects, if at all? It, well, it, it does. Uh, 686, if you were to look at it clearly as a math problem of how much traffic we expect on that road, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't hit that threshold of of being a priority. But when you look at the the regional importance, the the safety importance, the economic activity in the north, uh, it checks all the boxes. So it's it's a little bit of a science, a little bit of an art when it comes to prioritizing, uh, especially new construction projects, uh, not just uh, maintaining the existing ones. So we we obviously talked with uh, talk with our local municipalities as well to make sure that we can address their local issues. But uh, making a, a highway network across the province that ensures the safety of our communities and the safety of Albertans is the primary reason to exist as a government is to make sure you can make make sure that your your people remain safe. Uh, that's something that we'll, we'll constantly always review. And uh, like I said, 686 will go a long way of helping out northern Alberta when we can connect uh, east to west. Okay, operator, can you please put through the next caller? Colin Gallant, Medicine Hat News. 
Hi there, Minister. Thanks for uh, for uh, taking my call. Um, I'm just wondering um, if you can confirm a few things. There was a Western producer story out very recently about Highway 3 dates. Um, wondering if you can confirm that. I think you said that you'd be accepting a bids until or um, I guess uh, revealing a uh, awarding a bid in late September, and then the schedule for that uh, much talked about uh, Tabor to Burdett. Is that the general timeline now? Start up next year. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, with uh, Tabor to Burdett, that's the first of eight sections to finally twin Highway 3 from Medicine Hat to the BC border. Uh, the, as You're right, we're trying to make sure that we can get, if we lose a construction season at uh, the first stage, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that the final project will be completed on time. So we're, we're in talks with the, the companies that are bidding on it right now to make sure that that, that will be the case. So even though we, we didn't have the, the start of the construction season when we were hoping to have, which was this year, uh, we want to make sure that the completion date remains the same. So it's obviously Highway 3 twinning project is a priority for the province of Alberta, and we want to make sure that entire stretch gets, gets twinned. And as I, as I mentioned, there's, there are eight sections, and some of them are, are going to be a little more challenging to make sure that we uh, have the right route. But uh, that Tabor to Burdett is, uh, is already pre-planned. We, the feasibility study is done. We know exactly where it's going to go. We just have to make sure we have the right contractor to build it. Okay, and that's the holdup, uh, or is there still land acquisition, et cetera? It's the, the, land, acqu- the land piece is, is nearing done. Uh, we know exactly where we want to go. So the department always works with, the obviously, the landowners to make sure that it's it's the right and the local municipalities that it's the right direction so uh that that work is is underway but like i said we want to make sure that the project is completed on time which is uh, i believe it's it's two years that uh we're going to make sure that that's done okay operator can you please put through the next caller lisa johnson edmonton journal hi thanks for taking my question i just wanted to clarify a couple of the details minister because uh, I'm not clear exactly where the, these new paving technologies are being used. You mentioned that um, some of the some of the paving construction that's going on, the repaving, um, can extend highways for up to 20. Their lifespan of highways for up to 20 years. So how does that compare to like conventional asphalt paving? What would normally be done repaving a highway? Yeah, well, it depends on the technology, but great, great question. At, at Highway 33 in Barhead, that's where they're trying out this cold in-place technology, where essentially it, it recycles the existing pavement that is in rough shape and mixes in other materials to have that new overlay, that new pavement on top. So that is something that, again, it's, it's, it's a lot cheaper because you're not having to haul away uh, materials and haul back materials to, to build a road. And as I mentioned, geocells and some of these other technologies that actually have almost a, a honeycomb type shape that you can put as the base layer and not having to have you know, feet of gravel going down to build a solid base. You can replace it with these new types of technologies that have actually been approved by the Department of Transportation and Economic Corridors, but we haven't yet actually operationalized it to, within our procurement process. So there are lots of things, lots of new proven technologies around the world and even within Alberta that we haven't quite adopted yet in our procurement system. So those types of technologies will go a long way of preserving our, our highway maintenance network. And uh, we're, we're really excited to be partnering with these road builders and these engineers that uh, develop these technologies because we live in probably the harshest place in the world with uh, minus 40 and plus 40, extreme cold, extreme heat, as you can tell by today. Uh, so it's it's a very challenging place to, to build roads, but we have to be able to take the best from around the world to make sure that we get the best value for our taxpayers and we have a network that uh, can serve generations for come. Thanks for that. Yeah, and, and just just to go back to how that compares to conventional paving, um, and I, just to also to clarify, you mentioned CarMax Enterprise Group. Have they been contracted exclusively on Highway 33, or how are how are they involved? Do you want to talk about all the different projects that you have? Thank you, Minister. Uh, CarMax is uh, 
a 50-year road construction company operating in Alberta uh, with ties to Saskatchewan as well. Currently, we're operating in the West Calgary Ring Road, and we've built uh, the Northwest Ring Road here in Edmonton as well. So we do have expensive ties to Alberta Transportation, and, and we're just excited to be a partner to the Minister here with his announcements. And we do partner with transportation in any, in, uh, any kind of test pr projects that they're looking at too. We're always willing to be a partner with that and support the transportation with their initiatives there. Okay, and uh, operator, can you please put through the next caller? No other questions on the phone at this time. Excellent. Okay, and uh, with that, uh, that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you for your time, everyone. Have a great rest Thank of your you. day.